Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my pre-calculus tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about working with functions, graphing functions, and a whole bunch more, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so basically a function is just an expression that provides exactly one output value for each input value. And there's some slang we need to know. So for example, if you have a point, you are going to have something called the abscissa, and this is the x value of a point. So here's a point, let's just say it's one, two, this is called the abscissa. Then you're going to also have the ordinate, and that is going to represent the y value of a point. If you want to add functions, let's say you have a function, which is normally denoted with fx, and the function is quite simple. It's just x minus five, and you have another function, which is normally denoted with f2, which is 2x plus 3, and let's say we have f plus f2x. You would work this out by going x minus 5 plus 2x plus 3, which would, if we simplify this down, end up being equal to 3x minus 2. Now let's say we want to multiply functions. Well, this would normally be denoted f times f2, x, and we would designate this if we say x, well, we had minus five, right? And 2x plus three. If we go and multiply this out, we get 2x squared plus 3x minus 10x minus 15 and this of course ends up being equal to 2x squared minus 7x minus 15. Also if we have a value inside of here so we could say f times f2 and let's say we have a value of 4 well, this would end up being equal to 2 times 4 squared minus 7 times 4 minus 15, which is equal to 32 minus 28 minus 15 or negative 11. Now let's say we want to divide functions. So I'm going to take a function. I'm going to have 2x squared minus 7x minus 15. And we've talked about factoring in previous videos. If we have 2x plus 3, well, we are going to be able to factor the top into x minus 5 times 2x plus 3. This, of course, on the bottom is your 2x plus 3, which cancels out and simplifies down to x minus 5. All right, and a lot of what we've talked about previously in regards to multiplying and dividing different polynomials is going to apply here as well. You also have something called composition of functions, which is just simply putting one function inside of another. So let's say we have a function here, x squared plus 2, and another function, which is, well, let's go f2, x equal to 2x with composition, which would be set up like this, f2, x. That would work out to being 4x squared plus 2. Now I said previously for something to be a function, every input has exactly one output. So for example, if you had something like y is equal to plus or minus the square root of four minus x squared, which is what you see on the right side of your screen, that is an example of something that is not a function. And we have something called the vertical line test and what it says is if you can draw a vertical line through your graph and touch more than one point, this is not a function. 
some other terms that are going to come up a lot is the domain of a function. And this just represents all possible input values. So for example, if you had a function, square root of x, in this situation, the domain is all positive numbers. And whenever you're trying to find the domain, what you're gonna do is look for values of x where the function is just simply not defined. Let me give you some examples. So let's say we have a function here equal to square root of x. This would be undefined if x is negative. Let's say you have another function. This would be 1 over x. This is undefined, of course, if x is equal to 0. Likewise, if you had the log, which we're going to be getting into here extremely soon, this would be undefined if x is less than or equal to 0. Then we have our natural log, which again we'll get into very, very soon. This would have a domain where x is greater than 3. Okay, so there's just some examples of using the, the, the domain and defining the domain for a function. Similar to the domain, we have the range of a function, which is all possible output values. So for example, let's say you have a function x squared. The range in this situation is going to be all positive numbers, while the d domain is going to be all real numbers. We also have inverse functions, and what they are is an example of two functions that basically accept and transform a value of x, and then the inverse of that function would set x back to what it originally was. So what well, let's just come in here and let's do an example. Let's say you have 3x plus 2, and then you have its inverse, which is denoted with a negative 1. That would be x minus 2 over 3. So let's work through this. Let's say our function, we have a value of 4. Well, of course, this is going to be 3 times 4 plus 2, which is going to be equal to 14. Well, now let's take the inverse of that, which is going to be 14. Well, here, if we have 14 minus 2 over 3, this is going to give us back our original value of 4 which is right there, okay? And those are inverse functions. Now we're going to be doing a lot of graphing of functions, and what you can see right here on your screen is an example of the graph of the function x to the third minus 2x. And you may ask yourself, well, what exactly would happen if you would add a constant to this function? Well, it is either going to shift the graph up or down. So, for example, let's say we took our original function and added 1 to it. Well, we can go and graph this out. This is going to be exactly one point above where it is. So, we're going to have a point right here. And we can plug in all of our other different points here. And we're going to go off the screen here a little bit, but that's okay. And this is just an approximation, but it's basically just going to be exactly one value above where it was. All right. And I'll just come in here and roughly draw out this graph. And that's roughly what it's going to look like, except there's going to be more curve in it, of course. What would happen, however, if we would come in and let's say we want to multiply a function by a negative value. So in that situation, we would have fx equal to negative x to the third minus 2x. Well, basically what that's going to do is it's going to create a reflection of what we have. Again, we're still going to hit our origin point in the center. And then if we would go and draw our graph inside of here, it's going to look roughly like this. All right. And I wish I could draw a little bit more curvy, but you get the point. All right. It's a reflection of what it was previously. 
Now let's say we had something that was one half of what the original function was. In that situation, each point is going to be half the distance from the x-axis. And you can pretty much guess where that's going to be. So you can just come in here. Of course, the origin stays exactly the same. And then you're going to connect all of your points pretty much like that. All righty. On the other hand, let's say you took two times whatever your function was. In this situation, everything's going to be twice the distance from where it was. So it's going to go off the graph here a little bit. And the same point up here, roughly. And of course, the origin stays the same. And you're going to see that it actually dips. So you have more of an extreme type of angle in this situation. And it's going to look roughly like that. Alrighty. Another thing you may come across is, let's say you have your function. And you have the absolute value of said function. Well, in this situation, this is just going to simply convert all y values positively which means that you're basically just going to have a big U. So let's see if I can draw a U. Again, the origin stays the same, and it's going to look roughly like that. This brings us to another concept, which is functions that are even, odd, or neither. Now, whenever you have an even function, which this would be an example of a graph of an even function, even functions are going to be symmetric about the y-axis. So let's say we have x squared plus 2, negative x squared plus 2. Well, we can take our function with a negative x. This will be equal to negative x squared plus 2, negative x squared plus 2. And you can see in this situation that x squared plus 2 is going to be x squared plus 2 because of the natural way of just squaring the value of x. And in this situation, of course, a negative times a negative is always going to be positive, and hence this graph right here and this function right here is an example of an even function. On the other hand, you're also going to have odd functions. With an odd function, negative fx is going to be equal to function negative x. And in this situation, if the function is odd, then it is going to be symmetric about the origin. And this would be an example of an odd function. And that is the graph of fx equal to x to the third minus 2x. You can see here, if we go negative x, this is going to be negative x to the third minus 2, negative x, which would be equal to negative x to the third plus 2x, and of course, x to the third minus 2x is most definitely not equal to negative x to the third plus 2x. And in this situation, to be odd, the signs need to be the opposite of the original function. Then you also have functions that are neither even or odd. And this would be an example of that type of function. And this function is going to be x to the third plus x squared minus 2x plus 2. And this, of course, doesn't have symmetry of the previous even, even though it is a sum. If we work this out with negative x, this is going to be negative x to the third plus negative x squared minus 2 negative x plus 2, which is going to be equal to negative x to the third plus x squared plus 2x plus 2. And in this situation, x to the third plus x squared minus 2x plus 2 is not equal to negative x to the third plus 
x squared plus 2x plus 2. So what does that mean? Well, that means it's not even. Then if we perform our check to see if it's odd, x squared plus 2x minus 2, well, we see that that also is not equal to negative x to the third plus x squared plus 2x minus 2, which also says that this is not odd, which means that this function is neither even or odd. All right, and that brings us to the end of our video. And I'm going to be doing much more with functions. And also I talked about logarithms and trigonometry and a whole bunch more in upcoming videos. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.